everyone, it's Sharonda from Pay Her Weights, and today I'm going to be reviewing Little Fires Everywhere, episode 3, 70 cents, and guys, the devil is busy today. Huh. I recorded 22 minutes of excellence for this recap for this episode, and what happens when I download it? Spent an hour and a half downloading the video. Then when I'm trying to edit it together, it ain't no sound. The sound wasn't on the whole video. I'm livid, heated, sat in the dark for 30 minutes like, Lord, Lord. Why? All I can determine is the devil is busy because then I tried to record it again. Guess what? Battery died over it. But you know what? The devil is not going to win. Okay, the devil will be defeated today because I'm going to go ahead and give my recap. Huh. Huh. I'm going to try to give you the fire that I gave it the first and the second time. Third time to charm though. So we know at the end of episode two, BB told uh, Mio who, what her daughter's name was, Mei Ling. And so the episode opens up in December of 1996, where we see BB is taking care of her young baby, Mei Ling. Um, it is the winter, the baby's crying constantly. She's trying to breastfeed the baby. There's not enough milk to basically feed the baby. So BB decides to go to the store and try to buy some formula in order to feed her daughter. However, she comes up 70 cents short. And because of the raggedy, raggedy cashier ain't got no soul, no heart, nothing just raggedy and trash wouldn't give her the 70 cents to help her i was like i know you got like a little tip jar or a little case everybody got like an extra dollar of coins on hand you could have gave her the 70 cents but i'm gonna say because this show show does deal with race she was being racist she was being real racist and we kind of see that in the correlation of what happens to, to izzy um later in the episode and i'll talk about that a little bit later in this video um but we see that she tells her to get the F up out of my store. And I was like, you a trash human being. And so when she goes back, she realizes that the utilities have been cut off. Um, and I thought it was very beautifully shot, even though it was horrible what's happening. As we see Mei Ling laying in her uh, makeshift crib and, crib. and we see BB laying down as well. And as they're breathing, we can see the cold air. They can see their breath um, in the apartment. Let's you know that the heat's been cut off. They're freezing, hungry, nothing else to do. And so... BB decides the best thing to do for her daughter is to give her up. She goes to a fire station. She wraps her daughter up so that she's warm. And then she leaves the baby outside of the fire station. And I know that there's some drama coming from this. And baby, there sure was some drama. But as BB's telling me of this story, she tells her that she can still hear the cries of Mei Ling at night. And then also, too, Mia tries to tell her, like, hey, you should go look for your daughter. She's like, that's not possible because I'm illegal. As soon as I go to try to look for her, I would end up being... I would get deported basically. So she's in a rock and a hard place. And so of course Mia decides she want to be captain save a person today. And then she goes to the fire station to try to see if she could figure out where the baby is. There are no help. They tell her to go to the police station. And then she ends up helping Elena with a birthday party. And so is her friend Linda's who we saw um, at the book club. Um, she has had her daughter's first birthday party. And then she kind of tells her the backstory because she's like, y'all doing all of this for a first birthday party? And I'd be like, yeah, like, why do we, I actually, I can get the first. It's like, I say like the first, the fifth, and then we'll figure it out after that. But if they can't remember it, why y'all doing all of this? It's really not that serious. You don't need all that money. For all of that, you could have just paid for them to have some nice pictures, some nice photography, did a cake with some family and friends. I don't know why we're doing this big shindig but she basically tells her that the reason why they're making such a big deal out of it is because it's like something in my eye and it's so annoying um it's basically because she's been such a good friend to her she had miscarriages we kind of uh she had a miscarriage or i'm assuming she had a miscarriage they had trouble trying to have kids and so essentially um, she wants to make sure that this is the best party ever um, because they ended up getting um, adopting a daughter. And so then when she was talking about, did you see the cute little fortune cookies? And I was like, oh, OK, I guess she asked her that because she works at the Lucky Palace and stuff. I ain't thinking nothing of it. I ain't paying no mind to it. But then um, Mia asked her, is the baby Asian? And then I was like, Elena, you are trash as heck for putting some dang on fortune cookies with this Asian baby. Stop it. That was so trash, so raggedy. Y'all just ain't got no common sense. You ain't got no tech. You just uncouth, okay? You uncouth. I don't even understand it. I was like, she's so trash for that. So then Mia volunteers to become a photographer because at first she told her she had something to do and she couldn't help out. She had to work. But now she's convinced that this is BB's baby. So she goes to the party, okay? She's at the party taking pictures, being nosy like she always is. And then she goes up to the room. I was like, Lord, she didn't went up to this baby's room. Somebody go find her. 
And then she's like searching the baby's hair because uh, BB said that she has like a little dot in the middle of her head. So she sees the dot, she knows that it's BB's baby. And so then what does she do? You think she's gonna finish the job and finish taking pictures and stuff? Cause Elena had already rolled up on her wondering like, what are you doing with the baby? And they're talking about, well, I was getting some shots. And I was like, but girl, you didn't take no pictures. Like what's gonna happen when they ask for these pictures of the baby sleep? So she ends up leaving in the middle of the job, okay? She wanna get paid, but still, like at least finish what you said you was gonna do. She ended up leaving in the middle of the thing, going to the restaurant, telling BB what happened, thinking like, oh, okay, I'm just letting you know that, that I know that it's your baby. Like BB wasn't gonna roll up in that house. And so she was like, what would you do if it was Pearl? And then she gave her her car, okay? Gave BB her car. In the meantime, Mia goes home. She has her boss take her home. Her boss tried to slide through. And then she let him slide and get up in there. And then I was laughing at the end because when he rolling over, like he didn't really did something, like gave her the best deed that she could ever have in her life. She was like, you got to go. You got to go. I was like, I guess that deed wasn't that good, was it? <laughs> I was like, sorry, don't be looking like you really deed her down. Because you did it. Stop it. Stop it. I can tell that it wasn't even good like that. So in the midst of her getting her uh, back broken in, she basically, BB runs into the house. She drives into the people's house like, that's my baby, that's my baby. They like dragging her out. I'm looking shook, Elena looking shook, Linda looking shook, Maylene looking shook, everybody in the house looking shook. I'm like, oh my God, oh my God. I can't believe this just happened. So they carry her out and then they try to figure out what happened. How did she find her? What is going on? I'm trying to figure out this backstory. Well, how did y'all adopt her? If like all of this, like is shocking to you. I just don't understand. I guess I'm the only one confused. And then Elena said she's gonna help Linda figure out who the heck is behind this. So that's pretty much what happened with BB. I guess I can finish up what happened with me. I don't feel like that much happened to her um, outside of her being nosy. Oh. Bill got mad at the beginning of the episode because, you know, one of the stipulations was they had to make sure that they kept the grass cut. And so she gave her a discount because Bill said she was going to cut the grass. What happened? They got a fine. Bill was mad. Looking at Elena like, you not mad? I thought I told you that she needs to cut the grass. And so Mia makes up this, Elena makes up this excuse for Mia. And so then she tells Bill, well, why don't you go cut the grass? And I was like... First, she don't give you none. Then she got you cutting grass. But now it's like, yeah, you really could just go cut the grass. Like, my mom is a landlord. We cut the grass at her buildings. That's just what people do. Like, I don't understand. But, yeah, so he go cut the grass in his uh, work outfit. I was like, you ain't got no regular clothes, Bill. Like, you could at least just went in the tidy in the little uh, whiteies. What do you call them little undies he had on in the first episode, child? He could have went and just did it in the nose for all of that. Then he goes upstairs and then... He uh, tells her, like, hey, there's gas and stuff. I cut the grass. Like, you know, what's good? Then he sees the paint and starts laughing. I'm like, what you laughing at? Because it's good? Like, what you thought it was going to be? Ugh, he get on my nerves. But then she asks him, like, hey, do you know any attorneys? You're a lawyer. Do you know an immigration lawyer? He's like, yeah. And then she was like, what about, um, do they do pro bono work? And I was like, pro bono? Girl, who out here working for free? Especially in the 90s? Ain't nobody sitting up here doing no free work like that. Honey, stop it. Even he had to chuckle for a moment. He was like, nah, girl, I don't know nobody. For free? Free? <laughs> I just, I was confused as well. But, you know, that's pretty much all that really happened to... Yeah, I think that's pretty much all that really happened with Mia in the course of the episode. Um, but I guess... Who do I want to talk about next, y'all? Let me see, let me see, let me see. Actually, I'm going to go ahead and talk about my girl. Izzy, Izzy had a rough time, okay? So they at the dinner table, and then Tripp makes a comment because, you know, that some ignorant always happens at the Richardson family dinner. So he says, no wonder why they call you Ellen. And then she leaves and get mad at She was like, Ellen? And then they had to break it down for mama, like, Ellen De DeGeneres. So I guess she's starting to understand what could possibly be going on with her daughter, but I want to take a moment to talk about how her siblings, Moody, Tripp, and Lexi, oh raggedy, trash sibling behinds, they're trash. How you let your sister get bullied at school, okay? Because when they came home and I found out my daughter was getting bullied, and then y'all raggedy behinds was up at school and y'all didn't do nothing, all y'all behinds getting beat, okay? You take up for your siblings. I wish I would come home, tell my mama they was making fun of me and my brothers didn't do nothing to protect me. Everybody would have been in trouble. Everybody. And then I would have got in trouble for not standing up for myself. So I just think that they're trash for 
That's fine that they make fun, siblings make fun of each other at home, but when we're at school, we're on a united front, okay? Y'all are trash. The trash of the trash, you trash, trash, all right? So, I just had to get that off my chest, y'all, because I feel really bothered by how trash her siblings are. So, essentially, her mom tries to have a conversation when she's taking her to school. Doesn't go good, because her mom is just so delusional. Brings everything back to when she didn't have boobs in school. Like, girl, boobs is not going to be the end-all, be-all for people in high school these days. And so, she tells her, hey, if you don't want people talking about you, you got to change your narrative. And so, basically, she comes up with this crazy idea to go to the homecoming dance. She convinces Moody, Carl, and Pearl to go with her she did look really nice she looked very nice but i just wish she could have just went as herself just be yourself you're a pretty girl no matter if you wear a pretty dress or you wear whatever kind of clothes that you want to wear but just be yourself even mia was looking at her like girl you know this ain't you and so but i thought it was cute for the moment that she had with her mom her mom's teaching her how to shave um and it's kind of like being happy but at the end of the day you're still being delusional because your daughter can't be who she wants to be like imagine how great that moment would have been if Izzy was dressed how she wanted to be dressed and having this like moment with her mother. I think it would have been 10 times better. So then at the dance, April or Raggedy Behind, who I think April actually likes Izzy and wants to be with her, but she's not okay with like being gay. Um, she starts making fun of her. And so then Izzy tries to kiss. She kisses Carl, is dancing with him, got his hands on her butt. Then Pearl sees her, Moody get mad, going off on her. And that's like, don't be telling her how you appreciate her being who she is, but you don't sit up here and take care of your, uh, your sister or stand up for her at school. You trash. Don't try to give her no motivational speech because I'm over it. Okay? So at the end of the dance, she ends up taking a bus and goes home. And then uh, ironically, she's 70 cents short for the bus fare. He was like, oh, it's okay, honey, come on. And so we don't want to make things about race, but because we talk a lot about race in this series, like you can see the parallels between Izzy and, B and BB and what life is like in Shaker. So she ends up going to Mia's house and Mia takes her in. And then basically, I think after that, the episode went off. But I got to talk about some raggedy people in this episode. Um... Let's finish Elena up because she was raggedy when they're at dinner and they're talking about this march on Washington with Lexi's going on about how she supports the minorities, but she can't be a part of the minority association. I was like, when she said she marched, she went to the march on Washington and she said it felt like a dream. I said, you know what, y'all? I need y'all to cancel the rest of y'all dinner scenes because y'all say something cringeworthy every single time and it makes me sick sick to my stomach she's just so raggedy and I just don't understand it I literally died laughing when she said it was a dream I was just like I just I, I can't I really can't do it but a big thing that happens to Elena is the confrontation that April's mom has with her at Linda's party for their daughter and essentially she tells her that her their daughter basically came on to April that she sexually like assaulted April and she goes to tell Bill, like, you need to take up for your daughter, take up for our daughter and stuff. I'm like, but can you tell your kids to take up for their sister at school? Because, like, you telling your husband is, like, this is something that should be known to do. I think you need to have a conversation with your children as well. But she, he kind of loses it. He already knew what happened. And then she feels a certain type of way. And then he was just like, girl, I'm trying to go finish my game. Let me be. It's not my fault you're always late getting the tea on what's happening with our children. So... We'll talk about Pearl and Lexi together, okay? So Lexi, Lexi, you know, she took Pearl's speech or the letter that she wrote to the guidance counselor about the math class. So she sent up her telling this essay that she has to get into Yale that she stole Lexi's, no, Lexi stole Pearl's uh, letter. And so she's talking to her black boyfriend, Brian, and then she doing something. I said, girl, what did you do while you were saying this speech? I said, well, I'll be dang. She is giving him a hand job. She is literally giving this boy a hand job. Then I'm like, y'all on school property? Like, y'all ain't got no cameras? Y'all ain't got no security guard? Ain't nobody walking by? I don't, I just don't understand. Help me to understand because it doesn't make sense to me. So afterwards, in the midst of all of this, like, she brings Brian home for dinner. And then when Elena told Brian and uh, Pearl, like, oh, my goodness, you guys must have so, I bet you guys have so much in common with each other. I said, ma'am, that, that, that is, stop. Girl, do you know you be racist? Do you know the stuff you be saying is like very racist? I just don't understand. Even Brian looking like, see, this is why I don't ever come to your house because you always on this foolishness. And so then he was like, oh, you must love rapping basketball too. And then Pearl just looked at him. I was like, sis, you didn't get the joke? Like, what is wrong with you? I just, Pearl makes me mad at times. So um, then he ends up 
uh, when he's explaining to her, like, you're not a minority, this is why you can't be a part of the minority stuff, I was like, thank you, Brian, because I was hoping that you weren't one of them boyfriends who just dismiss all of the crazy racist things that she says. I'm glad that you said something to her about that. But then he got upset because he realized that she stole Pearl's essay after they were talking about it at the dinner table. And so then he tells her, like, hey, I can't rock with you like that. You didn't took this girl's essay. Like, you don't think that's wrong? And then when they become homecoming king and queen at the pet rally, she looking like, first of all, I'm shocked that they even had black cheerleaders in the first place. It makes sense for Brian to be black on the football team, but I was really shocked they had black cheerleaders. A lot of them, too. So... She get she thinking her boo finna come get her together in front of the school. He looked at her like, "You think we still cool? We are not cool. You thought I was playing with you? I was not." And so then um, she ends up taking Pearl shopping after she finds out they're going to the dance. And so, <clears throat> and so she ends up getting Pearl this dress. But then she asks her. She says like. Oh, you remind me of like Denise from the Cosby show. I said, cause she likes skin, honey. What you mean? She remind you of Denise. They got a whole family. You came up with Denise. Anyways, <coughs> my throat dry y'all. It's not the Rona. So then she says like, is your dad mixed? Cause you're like really pretty. And I was like, why is cause she pretty? She gotta be mixed. I don't understand this. Then proceeds to tell her a story about how she thought that Brian's mom was mixed because she had nice hair. I said, y'all just don't stop. Do y'all know how like problematic y'all are as a family? I just don't, I don't get it. Even Pearl looked annoyed at that point. Like they have a problem. They really do have a problem at this point. And so she started to feel a story type of way because she don't know who her dad is. Then that causes her to go off on her mama, which she has a point. Like, why does your daughter not know where she comes from? Doesn't know who her father is. Doesn't know who your family is. You seem to give her all the excuses in the world. And then she tried to, but when she tried to lie to her mom about this dress, talk about, oh, they were just giving dresses away. Girl, now you don't want nobody giving no dresses away. Stop it. You need to become a better liar, Pearl. I just don't. I don't understand. And then she insulted her mom because she made it seem like her mom doesn't provide for her. And I was like, oh, Lord, she finna here. Because, you know, my mom, she like, she'd be like, after the nine months I carried you. There's this thought. She'd be like, for the nine months I carried you, full clothing, bathed you, no charge. Literally, this is what she said to me every time I used to be, like, ungrateful or whatever. I don't own the rights to this song. Don't try to demonetize me. But, yeah, so they get into it. And so in the midst of all of this, um, Brian's mad again because during the dance, first of all, she called Brian. She's like, you're Tyson back for hot. I said, girl, go sit down somewhere. I'm sick of you. Brian, not ugly. He's a handsome young man, but he is not no Tyson Beck Beckford. Go sit down. I'm sick of you already, Lexi. So then he gets mad at the dance because he realizes because she lied and said that Lexi said that she told Pearl about what happened and she was cool with it. But then he found out she was not cool with this. So he left. Then she go chase him down, giving him the good good because at first she didn't want to have sex because somebody else. I was like, are y'all really basing y'all sex lives on 90210? Like, get your lives together. So she basically ends up having sex with him in order to get him not to be mad at her anymore. And that's basically all that happened with Lexi. But remember what I told y'all? I told y'all that Pearl like trip, okay? Pearl like trip. So she goes to the dance with Moody. Moody's getting on my nerves because it totally went over his head that she was trying to get him to go to homecoming with her. I was like, you're just so delusional that I just, you're just clueless, okay? You're just clueless. So then they get to the dance and he's like, everything's better with you. And I'm like, sir, it's too late. She's already feeling your brother. So I don't understand like why you're trying to give all these feelings now. Then when Tripp saw her, it was like, you look different. I said, boy, all she do is got a dress on. She's still just as beautiful as she was in the clothes that she had on before. It's about you look different and you look the same still. Okay. Clueless, dumb, raggedy. Okay. Trash. So they end up after the, um, after the dance, Tripp invites them to go to this party. And so she was like, yeah. He's like, no, I thought we were going to watch the movie. I said, Moody, are you serious? Y'all yeah, can watch this movie at any time. Is the movie that good? I want to go look up the movie. What was it before the sunrise, before the sunset? I need to go look this movie up because you really like would rather go watch a movie than go to this party. Then Pearl sitting on the couch looking pissed as hell. Like, I can't believe I'm sitting here with this ragged little boy. And I could have been with his brother Trip. Like, what was I thinking? Even Moody looking like, dang, I think I just just I think I just messed this up and I was like I think you did mess things up but can we just have a moment how they play Savage Garden I wanna lay right here forever they used to be my song y'all they used to be my song and then they went to the uncle Luke, say what's your favorite dirty exercise ah, 
Wait, what is it? Scorpio! Oh, it's your birthday. It's your birth. I'm sorry, y'all. I don't own the words to the own the rights to any of these songs either. But when they played that Uncle Wu, don't act like he went up there dancing. Because I was like, ah, 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 ah. you know, you got to do the, the. Okay, let me stop. I'm sorry, y'all. I'm sorry. But yes, so back to the episode. Let me get back on track. So overall for me, I thought that this episode was more fast. It was faster paced. A lot more is happening. Um, I think the first two episodes were really trying to get to understand who the characters are. But now there's drama is starting to unfold in everyone's lives. And so I think it's interesting to see the progression of Pearl because she's becoming more attached to the Richardsons. And this is causing more conflict between her and her mother because she knows that she probably wasn't raised in a normal, conventional way as other kids have been raised. And so she's being introduced to what a normal, stable family looks like or what she thinks looks like with the Richardsons. And and so um, I want to learn more about who Mia was and basically like what is happening with her because there's a lot going on and I just don't understand. And also too, was this the episode? Hold on, let me make sure. Let me look at my notes real quick. I'm sorry, y'all. Let me look at my notes. No, that was pretty much it. Okay. Yep. I think I got everything. I had to make sure before I let y'all go. Those are pretty much my thoughts on 70 cents. Like, it's going to be a lot of drama going on with BB trying to get her daughter back. Linda talking about, that's my baby. Girl, did you get birth? I understand you took care of her, but understand, you don't know what her story was. So I just, huh, get it together, okay? Get it together. But I really enjoyed this episode. This is probably my favorite episode so far. Definitely think that uh, Pearl's trying to get the good good. She's trying to get with Trip. She ain't gonna be messing with Moody no more. And I wanna see the drama that falls out between all of that. And Brian just a dummy for being with Lexi in the first place. I ain't got no other comments. And the whole Richardson family is trash, mine and Izzy. But yeah, those are pretty much my thoughts on Little Fires Everywhere, episode three, 70 cents. As always, my name is Sharonda from Pay Your Weight. And if you like what you saw today, make sure you hit the like button, hit subscribe, share this video with your friends, and make sure you hit the notification bell. And I love you guys 3000. I'll see you soon.